So first of all, I want to thank you again, Professor Sharif, who invited me here, and uh, all the faculty for the friendship, which has been uh, fantastic, and I could share their friendship and uh, exchanging ideas about everything, not just about uh, neurosurgery. So I have to talk about emergency evaluation management or the hydrocephalus and shunting. Everybody knows everything about the ventricular system and the production of CSF. You have these four ventricles and the choroid plexus producing CSF. Circulation is going through the ventricles and in the subarachnoid space. And um, of course, uh, La, the circulation should be perfect in order to maintain the regular content of CSF in the in the skull. Um, the production of the CSF is not just by the intracranial choroid plexus, but it's also by epidemal lining, interstitial space, and spinal dura of the nerve root sleeves. What is strange is that uh, in some way water is uh, making a communication, water which means CSF, is making a communication in between arterial vessel and venous vessels. So it's uh, some magic system which makes water communi communicate from the two compartments. The reabsorption will take, will uh, uh, be through the dura venous sinus, nerve root sleeves, and that transependymal, also parenchymal capillaries. It is surprising when you look at the content of the CSF to see that the uh, ventricular content, which is uh, third ventricle and uh, fourth ventricle, are just a minimal portion, just about six to seven cc. On the contrary, you know, plus the 30 millimeters of the lateral ventricle. So, but uh, the ventricular system, it's accounting for less than 25% of the entire CSF content of the uh, cranial and spinal con container. The function of the CSF are protection, neuroendocrinal, pH, metabolic, thermal, and protecting against ischemia, intracranial pressure, and perfusion, and also flashing metabolic toxins. Everybody knows the moral Kelly doctrine, which is fundamental because the cranial compartment is incompressible, and the volume inside the cranium is a fixed volume. So the blood and CSF are accounting for only about 8% of this content, and the, any increase in the, the content of the of the skull will rise intracranial pressure and the compliance of the system is in some ways very low because after you reach 25 millimeters of mercury the system will fail hydrocephalus easy to know it's uh, water in the in this in the in the, in the skull or in the brain and uh, the most common cause, this is also a bit surprising, it's uh, are not for sure mass or tumor, but are intraventricular hemorrhage or subarachnoid hemorrhage, malformation, and tumor account only for about 13%. A very common cause, which can be taken apart from the other malformation, is aqueductor stenosis. So if you're facing an acute idiocephalus in your emergency room, this scheme should be always kept in mind. Hemorrhage will account for a lot of this hydrocephalic uh, uh, condition. This is uh, something that uh, has been found, which is the first uh, possible treatment of the hydrocephalus, which has been done by, by this Arab author, the Syrian one, in uh, in the um, around the 10th century. Then the, there is a report in the 18th century by a French guy, Claude Nicolas, but the first attempt to shunt outside the, the, the ventricle, the CSF, was done in um, 1744 by this Claude Nicolas Lecat. It was, a, as, a, as a matter of fact, a, an external drainage exactly as we could do now. The patient died after five days, was a kid. Then we move to the modern times, and uh, 
the first real drainage was the one in 1939 by, by Arne Torkilzen. As a matter of fact, he was shunting from the ventricle to the cisterna magna. It was a forced sort of ventriculostomy. When I was young, I made a lot of uh, revision surgery of this Torkilzen system, which were functioning fairly well for many, many years, uh, mostly in kids. Then we move uh, to the um, to the era of the uh, of the ventricular uh, shunting by the use of valve or, or by the use of catheter. So the the first ventricular atrial shunt uh, was done by these four authors in 1949, and during the same year there was the first uh, ventricular lateral shunt. is just historical, but. Uh, the modern ventricular peritoneal shunt has started very lately, in 1954. In 1960, ventricular pleural shunt. So it was painful who first described this ventricular peritoneal shunt. Uh, Hydros efforts can be distinguished between non obstructive and obstructive, communicating, non communicating. Of course, uh, you will have uh, in non obstructive the fourth, all the fourth variants with dilating, and also in the communicating. If it's not communicating, you will see in most of the cases some obstruction of the aqueduct or basal foramina. Malformative hydrocephalus, it's accounted for a lot of cases carry one, carry two, primary aqueductal stenosis, then the walker either an encephalia or is post-infection, post-hemorrhagic, post-traumatic, secondary to mass lesion. Uh, CT scan, it's um, enough to detect uh, uh, ventricular dilatation. Maybe it's not enough to detect uh, a, a tumor or a, a AVM affirmation, but it's enough to define the, the size of the ventricle and the eventual presence of blood. In uh, this case, you have blood in the ventricle or, or in some subarachnoid space, or in the, this other case with the uh, infection, ventricular infection. Um, of course, you will not be allowed to, to make a shunt, external shunt. What you should be done should be external drainage. Of course, if you're facing a tumor, you have to take into consideration, as we will see later, two possible type of, of procedure. One is uh, shunting, the other one is uh, ventriculostomy because in some cases uh, it could be enough to solve the problem. Of course, you need to have the posterior fossa compartment, uh, which means for ventricle and um, subarachnoid system, which is functioning, otherwise it will, it will not work. So the, even in emergency surgery now, we take into account also the chance to perform a ventriculostomy. The type of uh, shunting we can consider are uh, the most common, ventricular peritoneal, ventricular atrial, ventricular pleural, quite uncommon, and lumbar peritoneal. I don't like the last one because in my experience, it will fail in most of the cases. The uh, we have seen the door hole exercise. So first thing is to teach to a neurosurgeon how to make a frontal bore hole and uh, make a ventricular drainage. And um, uh, also you can perform, of, of course, a drainage by occipital approach or parietal approach. This was a device which has been invented many years ago to give you the proper angle when you're um, Everybody knows this uh, magic number, 13 centimeters, 3 centimeters, to, to get the borehole and the coronary uh, fissure. And this uh, device is helping you to um, go medially in the proper way. Now, uh, if we move uh, the talking about the system we're using, we can uh, use a no normal um, catheter or but uh, catheter which are which have antibiotic impregnation. Um, first type of hydrocephalus that has been invented of shanty which has been invented the ventricular atrial is quite easy to perform. You need to have some tricks 
And uh, now many cases we, um, we do it by the aid also of um, anesthesiologists who are quite accustomed to get all these uh, veins uh, in subclavian space. Uh, ventricular prayer, I do not know exactly how to do it. I just, um, scholastic is what I'm showing now. Of course, the length of the catheter is something which is, can be predicted about five centimeters. The ventricular catheter should be just about five centimeters in the frontal region, 10 centimeters if you go by the occipital region. The length of the catheter, mostly if you're dealing with young patients, should the, of the peritoneal uh, catheter should exceed at least uh, 12 centimeters in order to prevent uh, the um, failure of the system by the growth of the child. Uh, if we're talking about the type of valve, it's a it's sort of mess because there are now 190 type of uh, valve in the market. And uh, uh, now this is something missing here. There was the, oh, okay. These are the valve which have been progressively developed. And uh, I think that this one, the uh, Akim, it's a sort of milestone in the in this field of valve. There are gravitational valve, this valve which is uh, uh, not affected by magnetic field. But uh, mostly we are now utilizing, I can show it uh, clearly, these three type of uh, valve. And um, mostly this Akim, uh, which is a programmable valve. Uh, you can have 18 different adjustments of the of the pressure. Now a new a new tap even came out, which is easier to adjust and which is will, will not be affected by magnetic field. Normal pressure is between 7 and 15 millimeters. If you are in a, cro in a chronic condition of uh, hydrocephalus, maybe you can profit for defining the pressure by continuous monitor monitoring of CSF because instant uh, uh, evaluation of the pressure is not, afford is not reliable. But uh, um, mostly you will use uh, um, low 4, 8, 12 millimeter of mercury, the three type of pressure you will uh, choose for the patient. Uh, this is uh, another type of valve, the anti-siphon, but uh, we have been using it. Uh, we have been deceived in many cases because uh, the scar which will surround the valve in many cases will uh, prevent uh, this uh, pressure related uh, mechanism to, to, uh, to function. Of course, as any other procedure, also shunting has a lot of uh, possible uh, complication. Most common, of course, uh, sub, um, subdural hygroma or malpositioning, which is, uh, can be done from the beginning or can be consequent to the reduction of the size of the ventricle. Also, if you have this uh, uh, valve which are adjustable, you have to keep in mind that uh, magnetic field can uh, really damage the functioning of the valve. You can have also uh, local complications, shunt migration, tube infections, tube obstruction, or uh, not disconnection fracture. Uh, I'm not going to talk about uh, non-pressure hydrocephalus. As a whole, if you're talking about emergency shunting or emergency dealing with hydrocephalus, I would just say keep in mind that you can perform endoscopic ventriculostomy, which would be better in many cases for the patient, uh, aqueductal stenosis, for instance. And um, nor use a valve, possibly it can be adjusted later on because in many cases, the proper, uh, I forgot to mention also slit ventricle, but the proper pressure of drainage sometimes very difficult to be established. So um, I just want to thank you again, and I want to invite you to Milan in next June for our biannual meeting of the Spinal Committee. Thank you very much. Thank you.